tuh guys Alright. Hey Hans. Hey guys, uh, just wanted to see if everybody can hear me. So you can unmute yourself or yeah, give me a thumbs yeah, up. I can hear you. Excellent, all right. What do we got? All right, six fifty-seven. All right, we'll give a we'll give a few minutes. Thanks everybody for coming today. Kind of a nice day to be inside. How's it going? <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thanks. It's nice to be able to see there are actually people out there. That's cool. <laughs> I'll quit the video in just a little bit, but I thought right. I'd say hi. Thank you very much. It actually is really nice. I, I am, I've done a lot of, uh, zoom things in the last uh year or so here now or it's march but i don't know it's still not that easy so yeah yeah well it's nice to see who you're talking to also yeah yeah well thank you so well thanks yeah. i appreciate it so we'll, we're going need, uh, a little bit of old school presentation even though we are on zoom i won't be using a uh um you know present mode or anything like that I tried and it wasn't working so well. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we're going to go back to, you know, basically chalkboard and uh, have some, some other props for you as well. So, all right. Everybody hear me all right? All right. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, maybe I'll just uh, start with some kind of little bit of introductions and stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Piat Bednarski, and I'm uh, uh, director of Flop at Sport, and uh, and and recently uh, director of Trails as well. So um, I'm not sure that's a good thing, but uh, anyway, my main love is cross country skiing, and I've been coaching cross country skiing since I've been 21 years old. Uh, pretty much it's all I've done. So uh, I, I love it and I love teaching it. Um, today we're going to, you know, kind of um, maybe give you a new perspective on how to learn cross-country skiing or learn a little bit about technique 
and as well as give you some things that uh, a couple things maybe that you can uh, work on before uh, the ski season begins. Um, so that's kind of some of my my bigger picture goals uh, for tonight. Um, so here we go. Well, let's get started, I guess. Um, oh, I guess I just wanted to mention one last thing. Um, uh, just about the Lopit Foundation in general. Um, you know, so we have kind of four main areas. We have events, which most of you are pretty familiar with. Uh, we have Lopit Sport, which is LNR, Trail Kids, Lopit Cycle Works, and we have a new run running program, Lopit Run 365. And I'm excited to say that we have a, a amazing new coach. His name's Abdi Bile. He's a world champion in the 1500 meters. Uh, a while back, but uh, he was pretty much one of the, uh, you know, probably top three uh, milers in the world for about a decade. So super impressive, very cool guy. So we'll be having some training presentations by him as well. Anyway, um, the last portion, of, then we also have, uh, with the Lopit Foundation in general, there's uh, trails, uh, trails and trailhead. And then the last part is uh, adventures, which is our, um, our programs that we run in North Minneapolis that are in elementary schools and middle schools. Um, so that's kind of the, the big picture. Anyway, um, yeah, this year programs are going crazy. There's a ton of new programming. Uh, lots of people are signing up as I'm sure everybody's heard COVID, you know, there's not as much going on inside. So it's exciting for us. Uh, I mean, most of our programs are already filled, adults, kids, and so on. So we're just trying to hire new coaches and uh, yeah, do a better job of that. Events, we will be having events this winter, but uh, they'll be a little different, uh, you know, than in past years. So probably a little bit smaller, um, but we're hoping to have a Luminary, Lopit Festival, the whole deal. And we actually have an event coming up, the Turkey Traverse, the 5K, uh, I think it's the weekend of the 20th. So coming up anyway. All right. But that's a 5k running kind of trail race and uses uh, the trails right around the trailhead as well as a lot of portions of the golf course. So, uh, okay, well, let's get going. Um, all right. I'm going to just uh, start really technique and from a biomechanist point of view. Um, and I, I did, uh, I uh, went to graduate school for biomechanics, um, which was a great learning experience. It's not always easy to apply to cross-country ski coaching, but you know, from that point of view, and we'll do a little bit of kind of biomechanics and how does that how does that apply to cross-country skiing? So there's kind of four big elements: weight shift, and we'll talk about each one. So you don't have to memorize them, right? Weight shift, body position, balance, and timing. So we'll kind of go into each one of those. Uh, and, um, and then, uh, but first I'm gonna take, and here's my little skier guy. We'll talk about him to illustrate, uh, you know, body position. Um, but to start with, we're gonna start with some ski math. And I think, uh, um, you know, because that'll give you a little bit of description of what exactly technique is. And this applies to a lot of sports. Uh, for sure, swimming would be very similar. So velocity equals, does anybody, uh, I'm just curious, anybody out there, you can, you know, uh, um, distance over running, time. What is, uh, how do you, met, how do you determine, what's one of the ways to determine velocity? What are the determinants of, of running speed? Anybody know? Distance over time is the formula, isn't it? So it's well for so like what parts of somebody's running? Yeah, if you looked at it, it would be stride length times frequency. And you can do the exact same thing in skiing, right? In, in running, it's very easy to measure stride length. It's exactly how far, you know, from foot footfall to footfall. Um, so, but well, we'll call it so, right? So stride length times your rate, okay, how many you know steps per minute. And in cross-country skiing, uh, the stride length is, well, here, let me just put it this way. 
rate. That's how many steps per minute. And it's skiing, let's see you're doing V1. So here's a relaxed V1 and here's uh, a really high tempo. Um, is it, you know, would you say that it's really expensive uh, energy wise, metabolically to increase your stride rate? Any, any guesses out there? So, yes. yeah, it, it, it's very expensive to, to increase your rate of whether it's running, skiing, the, the tempo at which you're skiing, it's very hard to increase in order to go faster, right? Because if you want to go faster, you got to increase one or both of these things. Well, when you're racing, hopefully you can increase, increase that a little bit, your rate, but your stride length is basically your technique and is a very direct correlation. It's the exact same thing if any of you are swimmers, right? The further you can go on one stroke in terms of distance, and even if over a long ski race, 10K or better yet, 50K, if each stride, if you've improved that stride by, you know, one inch, uh, 2.5 centimeters, uh, I mean, or more, it's going to add up. It's going to add up in a big way. So this is what technique is. It's basically technique times your tempo. All right. And as we get older, uh, I can tell you, uh, I'm guessing most of you understand, uh, tempo is super hard to increase. And you'd be lucky if you can just hold on. And so the point is, if you make improvements in your uh, technique, your stride length can increase or at least maintain where it is. And, uh, and you're gonna go faster. And plus you're getting more fun. You're gonna look better. It's all sorts of good things happen. So that's ski math right there, very important. Okay, in skiing, there are no footfalls. Um, so it's a little harder to measure and we don't actually need to measure it. You can usually just feel if you're going a little further, but just for, uh, you know, if you are a, a scientist of any kind and you're like, yeah, okay, think about it. If you're skating, for example, um, your skis never, there is no, like when you put your foot down and running, you actually, it stops, right? While you move over it. Well, in cross-country skiing, when you put your foot down, uh, it keeps moving, uh, right? In skating, Anyway, so the um, so what you're measuring is the distance your center of mass moves uh, from pole plant to pole plant. So it's a little bit. Anyway, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so it, it, it's a little bit different to measure uh, to to figure out what stride length is. But for our purposes, uh, as a uh, student of the sport, just know that hey, with every push or the between the, from one pole plant to the next, I need to be able to go a little bit further and I'm gonna go a lot faster. Uh, so boom, that's it. All right, so how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna ex ex extend stride length? And so we're gonna do it with all these different things. So first thing, weight shift, I'm just gonna define it real quick. Often you're instructing, if you join LNR group or you, know, you get some instruction, you will have, people say, hey, um, yeah, we're gonna work on weight shift and it could be 10 degrees out and you're really not interested in those details because you're freezing to death. So, but right now we can go into the details a little bit, all right? So center of mass is basically, uh, you know, your belly button, okay? And you wanna be able to weight shift, the definition of weight shift for cross country skiing is moving your center of mass from one ski to the other, okay? And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tilt this down a little bit just so you can see my feet. All right, so if I'm skating, um, I wanna be able to have my center of mass, here's my belly button over my ankle, all right? Should have brought white shoes or something, then you could see them better, all right? And then when I move over, boom, my center of mass is over the other one. Okay, and so just by moving my center of mass, I create movement. It's really cool. Cross country skiing, get to do that. Um, anyway, when uh, you are and you've all seen, you know, whether you yourself or you've seen other people when they first learn to ski, the, the movement of center of mass tends to be very small. Center of mass is right here. 
and it's moving like three inches from here to here because this person is scared of falling. This is the safe place. So yeah, you got to get from, you know, here to a place where you can move your center of mass. So I'm going to talk about skating, but there's center of moves in classic skiing as well. Okay, so I'll just, you know, just to illustrate though, again, some of the advanced things, right? So from a, a beginner skater, they're going to get a little better. They're going to move like this a little bit, right? And then an advanced skater is going to go from here, boom, here, and the um, and they're going to be able to glide better, right? But the center mass is going to move a lot more dramatically. So side to side. All right. So that's, I mean, that's a huge part of skiing. And uh, we will go, I'm going to run through these things fairly quickly. And then we'll look at some examples of skiers and say, oh, great. Uh, here's an il illustration of great weight shift. Okay. So anyway, that's, uh, um, let me, uh, we'll look at maybe, well, we'll talk about it as we go, but that's kind of one of the key things, especially when you discuss skate technique is learning how to move. So if you hear some instruction, you're like, oh, you're not shifting your weight. Well, it probably means your legs are really wide or you're having trouble like, you know, balancing on a ski. And so those things are really connected. All right, we'll move through and then I'll give you some examples. All right, here we go. So body position. So uh, also known as, you know, the, the kinematics of skiing. Um, and that's just describing. Uh, so here you go. Can you guys see that okay? Do I need to move you up? Can you see my skier guy? All right. Uh, yes? No? All right, so here's my little skier. This guy actually got pretty good body position, okay? Um, so you have your torso, upper leg, lower leg, ankle, right, key things. And I'm gonna just identify some angles. And it's not like you need to use these descriptions all the time to talk about technique, but when I describe them, you need to know what they are, okay? So this is my torso right here. This is my, what I'll call shoulder angle right here. So that would be the angle under my armpit, right? My shoulder angle. Every angle is described by three points. So you got elbow, shoulder, hip. So that's your shoulder angle, elbow angle. All right, it's described by my wrist, my elbow and my shoulder. All right, um, here we go. Here's a knee angle. Okay, you can see my knee angle described by my ankle, knee and hip. Okay, and then ankle, ankle angle right there, foot, right? So these are all important. Okay, there you go. So you have your skiers, uh, you know, body position. I guess there's a couple other little things here, right? The angle of your ski pole to the ground. And really here, I'm gonna give you one more and that is your torso to vertical, all right? So you can see that there's, you know, this person here is, they're not sitting totally upright. They're not sitting all the way over. All right. So um, anyway, so that kind of gives you a couple things. One other thing that I, I illustrated on here is line of sight. So you can see here's the spine and line of sight is perpendicular to the spine. And that's an ideal, you know, uh, ideal situation, okay, that, um, and we'll talk a little bit about more of that, about that, but um, really for good technique, you want your line of sight, and we call it natural head position, but that it's perpendicular to your spine. That means if your body's down here, you're not looking up, all right, and you're not, or if you're up here, you're not looking down, okay, your neck is relaxed, and it's most relaxed, when your line of sight is perpendicular to your spine. Okay, uh, a couple other things to do with body position. Um, we'll talk about posture and athletic position. And without both of these things, your skiing and all your other sports skills are gonna be a struggle, okay? It's gonna be hard to learn things. It's gonna be hard to go fast. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or 
fairly advanced. Um, these are super important. Uh, okay, so let's talk about posture. So good posture um, is uh, how, you know, here, I'll, maybe we'll start with bad posture. Sometimes with instruction, I enjoy doing, showing what not to do, okay? Uh, you know, all the big you know, teaching philosophy is not to do that, but I find it to be fairly illustrative. Here we go, bad posture, there you go. Everybody knows what that looks like. And cross-country skiing used to be taught this way, that, oh yes, it was relaxed, it was good. No, it's not good, do not do it. It's very bad, it's bad for your health in general, all right? You know, you want to have good posture and my posture is not the greatest because I didn't realize this until, you know, probably many, many years of cross country skiing and I've been trying to improve it. Um, but the, some of the things that will define good posture as you ski are kind of chest forward, you know, and uh, yeah, just pulling chest forward and eyes up. Often people drop their head, you know, whether you're doing classic skiing or and they're looking down and everything is rounded. Okay, skating, double pole, classic skiing, double pole. You know, position at pole plant, the upper back needs to be basically a straight line. That doesn't mean it's vertical, it can still lean forward, but it's not hunch, it's up. And you can see, as soon as you bring your chest forward, your posture improves greatly. Everything works better. I'm just give you a couple things, okay? And if you take nothing else home <laughs> from this little discussion today, it, this is the, the big one, okay? Posture. Um, and again, it doesn't matter what sport you do. This is important. Um, so uh, when you cross country ski, let's say you're double pulling, for example, here's one. Um, you come up to plant here, swing your hands up. You are double pull. If you're hunched, very difficult to use your abdominals, your core, because you are hunched and these, all these abs are short right now. Okay. Well, they need to be long. All muscles work best when they are stretched. So you, and so double pulling, no different here. You can just here, check them out, feel those abs. All right. And then hunch over. Okay. They're all bunched up here. Exaggerate a little bit, stand way up. Okay, now they're long, right? Especially if you did like a bunch of sit-ups or something, if they were sore, you could really feel it. You reach out uh, your abs, right? They're connected to your pelvis and up here on your sternum and your ribs, okay? So good posture stretches that out. Good posture opens your lungs, okay? So those are key things for cross-country skiing, okay? Huge. All right, athletic position. Um, athletic position, all that means is that um, you are aware of um, ankle bent, knee and ankles and knees slightly bent here. And I'm gonna, uh, basically you gotta look like that guy right there, my little skier, okay? And I'm just gonna focus here on my lower body. Boom, right there. And it, you know, for our purposes right now, it doesn't matter where the arms are, okay? What matters is what's happening down here, okay? Ankles are flexed, knees have a little bend. And my torso is maybe leaning a tiny bit forward, okay? Basically, lower leg, torso, parallel. This would not be parallel, okay? All right, and I see a ton of people, uh, especially adults learning to ski, will spend a lot of time like this. And then they say, my back hurts, all right? Well, yes, your back hurts because you're hunched over and your legs are straight. So it doesn't matter really whether you're skating, whether you're doing double pole, um, all those things. Anytime your poles hit the ground, you need to have um, like perfect athletic position, torso and lower leg parallel. If you're going to err on, the, and, and on either side, you got to have your torso a little more upright. All right, so my little guy, I mean, he doesn't have to be perfectly parallel. He could have, he could be a little bit more upright, right? And that's fine too, all right? And for most adults, you know, this perfect parallel lines is kind of what I would expect from, you know, a really good junior skier, a good, really good collegiate skier, 
uh, or you know, international level skier. Um, if you're a little bit more upright, that's better, okay? So um, really quick athletic position and you might've, maybe you play tennis, maybe you play baseball or basketball. It does not matter, it is the same, okay? If you are like waiting for a serve in tennis, you're here, you are here, right here. You are not like this. You might see people warming up to start their, um, you know, but if you're anticipating movement, it is from this position, right? Ankles bent, knees bent, and torso is not here. Boom. All right. And so every technique, it doesn't matter if I'm classic skiing, it doesn't matter if I'm double pulling, it doesn't matter if I'm skating, they're all in the exact same position. All right. And that's kind of a nice thing about this, our little just presentation today. It doesn't, all this stuff does, it applies to classic and skate. We don't have to do a lot of specific, oh, this is about classic, this is about skate. Um, anyway, you can go through the sports. It doesn't matter. Basketball, um, you know, same thing. You're moving, you're preparing, you know, here. If you're cross country skiing, we showed you, I showed you all the positions. Um, if you're uh, skiing the Berkey, going down a hill, there's like people all around you. You're a little nervous. You're like, yeah, I've been practicing my downhills, but I'm not with a hundred people. Um, a lot of people, the first thing they do, here they go, downhill, straight legs and bent over, or just like this, ah, right? No, ankles bent, knees bent, torso up right here. This is the safest and fastest way down, right? So you can still step, you can move, boom, boom, but your torso is just a little bit lean forward. Spend a lot of time, I spend a, a lot of time with um, uh, teaching adult groups and juniors, of course, and uh, we'll spend time working on cornering and slaloms and so on. And this is the number one mistake uh, is, People go into like taking a little turn and I'm not, I'm not talking slalom like on a super fast downhill. I'm talking like flat or very gentle downhill. And even in those situations, you know, just learning how to step turn quickly. It's all about going to this position. All right. So maybe uh, one of those things you can do, you get in front of a mirror and you say, all right, what does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, the big thing you have to focus on is ankles bent. All right. You don't have to think about bending your knees because you cannot bend your knees without bending your ankles. It's, um, if you bend your ankles, your knees will bend. I guess you can bend your knees without your ankles. That would be the on the can position. This is very uh, not so fast. So ankles, knees bent, torso fairly upright. All right. Let's see. Okay, so we talked about posture. We talked about athletic position. Uh, we'll talk a second about balance, all right? So balance just means that most of skiing is dynamic balance. It means you're only there for a fraction of a second, right? So let's say I'm skiing, doing V2 alternate technique. I come up, my weight, comes over and up, right? Over my ski, over my foot is there for a fraction of a second and then it's off, boom, boom. Um, but your ability to actually balance, let's say on a downhill where you do a drill or you've got to hold it for one, two seconds. I mean, that's a good thing. They should, those are, those are helpful things. But to understand that skiing is not about, you know, what I'll call Statue of Liberty, like trying to just, stay there for a long time. In general, that's not what you're trying to achieve. Um, anyway, all right, I'm gonna define balance a little bit in skiing. You know, balance means, oh, my balance, it means that your center of mass is over your foot, <laughs> okay? So if I'm really balanced, here's my center of mass. You can see, hopefully you can see my, my foot right here. Okay, and um, I am not balanced here. There's no way I can be balanced. Here's my center mass is between my feet. Okay, this is the only way. 
you can see when I am balanced, my hips are flat, okay? It is very, I actually can be balanced this way, but I don't recommend it, okay? So this is the, uh, the best way to be balanced. And you can see in order to get my hip, my center mass over my ankle, my hips actually gotta be out a little bit. So that's balanced, okay? All right, so we'll look at some videos and you can see if someone has good weight shift and if they're balanced. All right, um, last, yeah, let's see. Okay, and then um, real quick on timing, I'm not gonna spend much time on that right now. Timing is what differentiates all the different techniques, all right? And so I'm guessing, and maybe a, I'm gonna ask you guys uh, maybe to turn on your microphones here in a second. And I'd like to ask you a little bit about your experience but timing is what differentiates, you know, V1, V2, V2 alternate, uh, kick double pull, double pull. I mean, when things happen. So that's a little bit more of a detail and we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that this evening. Um, we kind of discussed the main and most important things uh, already. And timing is a detail you will learn on snow. Uh, so, all right. Um, I'm just curious, uh, um, I don't even know how many people we got on today. Oh, we got a bunch, okay, cool. Um, there we go. Well, I'm gonna go with the assumption that most of you guys have, uh, you know, uh, an idea a little bit about different ski techniques, uh, but I'm gonna try to keep everything we talk about pretty basic, all right? So, um, all right, we did ski math. We talked about weight shift, and body position. All right, okay, we're gonna add a couple things. Um, just real quickly um, about, I'm just gonna finish this up, I'm almost there. Um, and that is, uh, what is range of motion? All right, that's kind of a big part of, um, so if I ski, and let's say I'm skiing and I'm double pulling, okay? And, um, and I'm gonna ask you guys, hey, do I have a good range of motion at my shoulder? And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll answer that for you, okay? Because there's a lot of you guys out there. <laughs> the answer would be no, I have like zero range of motion at my shoulder. The shoulder joint is not even moving. So a lot of people when they learn how to ski, you know, or they, um, so, this would be a good range of motion at the shoulder, right? My range of motion is basically the angles that your, uh, the joint goes through, okay? So um, you need to learn to create good range of motion. And in a very general statement, big range of motion is good <laughs> in any sport, okay? So if we talk about cross country skiing, having good range of motion at the shoulder, okay? Here, I'm gonna have a good range of motion at my elbow. It's gonna start about 90, and it's gonna finish at 180. All right, now I'm gonna show you a range of motion, you know, with my legs, okay? So a lot of people when they first start skiing are very stiff and that's just normal. You're nervous or you just you can't balance, all those things. And so the legs are very stiff, okay? Um, and there's very little motion, but often you'll see like, little kids like six years old, seven years old, once they learn how to skate, they have crazy range of motion. And that means they're using lots of ankle bend and lots of knee bend. And so their, um, their ankles and knees go through a huge range of motion. All right, and that's in general a good thing. Although when you start doing that initially, when you start um, learning how to use big range of motion, uh, it's tiring. Um, and so often I will say, we'll have a class, a training group and say, okay, hey, we're going to do some legs only skiing. We're going to ski in the circle. Everybody goes skis in the circle. I said, okay, hey guys, you're all on way too stiff of legs. We need range of motion, range of motion. So we're going to exaggerate. We're going to ski around the circle a couple times and everybody does it. And the range of motion increases a tiny bit and after five minutes, everyone's exhausted and that's normal. Um, it takes some work to increase your range of motion, especially as an adult. 
as a high school age athlete, it's it comes much faster, but it's still tiring. Your muscles, your nervous system are used to uh, a certain range of motion and to change it, you got to work at it pretty hard. Um, one of the things that is helpful, of course, is strength training and simulating, whether it's squats or other things, you make sure that you use a big range of motion. All right, so that's just to illustrate. Um, in general, you want to be able to use a big range of motion, especially in the legs. Okay. Um, okay, as far as, uh, so we talked range of motion, I'm gonna describe one thing here, just what I call push, push theory. And this is applies to cross country skiing, uh, classic and skate. So we talked about range of motion and there's three joints in the legs. And I'll spend a lot of time talking about the legs because uh, even though the poles are very important, your enjoyment in cross country skiing, I mean, it comes from kind of uh, skillful and you know use of the legs and good ranges of motion. Um, your ability to handle downhills and cornering, if you don't have strong legs and you don't have good range of motion, it's difficult. Okay, so push theory. So uh, and, um, you need to be able to extend at your hip, your knee and the ankle. All right, boom, looks like that, right? So it's hip, knee, ankle, and this is not sufficient. You need to be able to push off your toe a little bit. All right, the only way to work on it is <laughs> to do it. And ideally you, you practice on a, like a gentle downhill that you don't have to work that hard. You can just go through the motion, boom. So that's uh, push theory in skating. You need to be able, but it, it looks very similar in classic, right? You're coming from here, boom, right? Three joints, one, two, three, all of them extend. It's the same in running. Um, so feels a little different in skiing, but there's really all three. Um, just to note, right, in skating, obviously we're pushing to the side. You should think always of pushing directly to the side. You don't push back at all. The only reason there's back motion is your skis are angled, right? Um, okay, so we had kind of, uh, some of the instructional things, and most of you guys probably realize this, when you are trying to improve your technique, um, you need to spend, and, and your kind of strength as a skier, you need to spend a lot of time either double pulling or going legs only, classic and skate. I would say, you know, this classic can be a little bit frustrating sometimes if you don't have good kick and all that, but skating, you can spend, you know, at least I'd say 30 to 40% of your time just skiing legs only. Okay, super, that's how you'll make the biggest improvements. Um, okay. All right. So, talked about athletic position. Uh, I will give you a quick story. Um, and I've been talking a lot about this athletic position and torso and lower leg. I spent a little time skiing. Uh, this was many years ago. I was with a big a uh, group of LNR skiers out in West Yellowstone. And Thomas Allsgard was there, who's known to be maybe the best, you know, skate technician in the world. You know, he's won like something like 12 gold medals. And yeah, anyway, very famous uh, Norwegian athlete. And he was skiing with different groups, you know, for a half hour, 45 minutes. And we were lucky enough to like get him, unfortunately, he was uh, pretty typical, you know, very stoic Norwegian, and he wasn't very talkative. And but he said the first thing he said is, "Okay, let's go ski. Put your poles down." And then he took off, and we huffed and puffed and chased him for 20 minutes, and he finally stopped. And then he said, "Do you have any questions?" And I was with a um, big group of high school kids, and here was the mo. Here was the moment. Come on, guys, ask a question. You're with Thomas Allsgard. Nobody had a question, so I, so I asked a question. I said, so what, 
what angles are the most important or something along those lines? And he just laughed at me. He goes, ah, you coaches asking about angles. That's so silly. There's only one angle that matters. And that's torso and lower leg parallel done. And uh, there we go. That's all he said. And then he skied off into the sunset. So, um, but I do, I, I do actually uh, now spend a lot of time looking at that. And that is, I think, very true. Um, so if you can master that, uh, and we'll go over a little video so you can see what I'm talking about is, but it, it'll really help. Okay, what else do we got? Um, okay, um, I'm gonna take a second to work on, uh, all right, balance. I'm gonna come back to balance for a second. Um, before we move to some video clips. And uh, why I wanna talk about this um, is because it's actually something everybody can work on before the winter gets here and during the winter. Um, and if you roller ski, that's great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. There's still some things you can work on. Um, I've taught a lot of uh, adult skiers I mean, I, I work a ton with juniors, but uh, with adult skiers as well. And often I work, you know, I'm coaching some of the same people year after year after year, which I really enjoy, uh, except occasionally, uh, or maybe not that occasionally, you know, people make some improvements and they train a lot, but then they stop improving. And I'm not talking their physical abilities. I'm talking about their technical, their ability to make changes. I mean, most people have a fairly small window and, and then other things start getting in the way. Um, and a big one with adults is your ability to balance and it, it comes down to some alignment and basically strength or strength and balance things. So I'll give you a quick example here. Um, again, I'll, I'll get into the skating position. And I'll, I've had a lot of people that, um, here, we're working on one technique, V2 alternate, all right? Open field, it's also called, requires uh, a fair amount of balance because you're gonna step, swing your hands up, you're gonna put your foot down, all right? You ski down, you're gonna glide onto it. And I got a great uh, example of this to show you guys, all right? You're gonna come up here and you're not really gonna pause, but you're gonna really try to extend your glide and you're going to get complete weight shift and then bang off of that one, right? Anyway, I do video, we talk about it, we do some drills, and it's the same year and year. I'm like, I am a, yeah, I am not a very good coach because we've talked about this. I've showed you, I showed you video front and back, and it's still the same. What's the issue? And I kind of realized, um, that the issue is, I mean, the athlete's listening and the athlete wants it really bad, but you know, there's just, uh, all of us have a lot of kind of strength and postural things that are not helping. So in order to maintain balance, okay. And to, you need to be um, able to, you know, this is a lot of group, a glute um, a recruitment. You need to have fairly strong glutes. There's all sorts of exercises you can do uh, to be able to do that. Okay, so for example, and I'm just gonna, actually, I'm, I'm gonna put a little video together with some exercises. But I mean, one of them here is just, uh, you know, you're brushing your teeth, you stand on one foot and you can do circles. I'm gonna brush my teeth. All right, maybe you guys try that right now. Why don't you guys hop up? Who's that? I'm you're not. Who's this over here? <laughs> okay, try it really. Get up, get off your feet, and uh, get yeah, stand up, and try a little. Uh, just balance, and circle one foot. Okay, circle it around. All right, and brush your teeth. Close your eyes if you need to. All right, there's one exercise. Hook, switch legs. All right. There we go. All right, I'm brushing my teeth. Well, okay, you wanna make that a little bit harder. You fold up a towel, 
you put under your foot. You want to make it a little harder, you get a balance pillow. It costs like 10 bucks on Amazon. All right. I don't think I have one here. A lot of you guys have seen the BOSU balls. BOSUs are great, but you don't need anything that fancy. Okay, here, I'll give you another one. There's a whole bunch more, and I'm just going to take two minutes to illustrate. Uh, you can go on YouTube and come up with a bazillion exercises. But here we go. Here's another one. Um, uh, I call it the modified Romanian deadlift, one-legged, but you balance on one leg, hands up in the air. You could use a little weight or not. Boom. I'm going to come back down. Boom. Boom. Up. All right. Up. All right. If you do this and you can feel, especially here, you get into a T, drive your foot back. Here, I want you guys just to hold on to that for a second. Okay. You feel that glute? That glute. They are working. They are working. All right. Let's try it. Let's switch feet. That gets everybody. All right. Switch feet. Up. All right. Hands. Boom. T. Perfect T. Point your toe down. This is a rotated hip. Don't do that here. All right. Oh. Balance. All right. I gotta work on that a little bit. Okay. So that's just a silly example. Here's another one. Maybe if you've gone for a physical therapy uh, for almost anything, especially any kind of knee pain. And there's a, these are some that you probably have done before. Here's another one. I call it dip toe in water. That's probably a stupid name, but here we go. It's like, I'm. this one's another good one to do on a, uh, a surface that's kind of soft. And again, you get a pillow or a towel or a yoga mat or whatever, and you bunch it up. Do it right now. There we go. This just makes it slightly more unstable. All right. Good. All right. Dip toe and water. And it elevates you, which is kind of nice. Here's dip toe and water. I'm going to take both my hands. I'm going to take my other foot and reach over. Boom. Up. Down. I reach over. You can feel that. I did a little strength class this morning, so my glutes are kind of killing me, but up. All right, you get the idea of switch legs. I'm standing up. Hands are just going straight up, I'm coming down, touch the ground. So I'm bending my supporting leg a little bit and I push my other leg through so I can feel a lot of this is not really a strength exercise. It's just an engagement. <laughs> kind of gets those. So there you go. All right. Basically, when you recruit your glutes well, it helps you bring your knee in. That's called alignment, knee alignment. And if you have trouble doing that, if you're trying to ride a ski and your knees are flopping in, and that's very common. Most of us are kind of constructed that way a little bit but it's really hard to ride a flat ski. And so when you try to swing your hands up and to get on that flat ski and your knees like this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna boom and come right off it. You're never gonna actually get up on that ski. So anyway, this is a, uh, or let's say you're even, you're in a tuck and you're just going down the hill and you need good alignment. You look at my knees, I don't want my knees together, okay? because often if I do that, I'll be riding my inside edges. I wanna be able to keep my feet. All right, often I ski behind someone and I can see exactly, especially if they're on roller skis, because when you're on elevated on wheels and you're, and you're leaning them in, it's super obvious. Okay, so that's alignment. All right, and um, I guess the last term I'll call it here is kind of bone on bone balance where I'm here I can use my bony structures, basically my lower leg and my upper knee and my upper leg with a little bit of help from my glutes. This is a very easy place. I have a little bit of ankle bend, I'm not locking it out because if I hit something, I'm gonna fall. I got it here, here, boom. All right, so that's where I'm skiing. Um, all right, 
I spent a little time on that because it is something you can actually like act on. And there are a lot more things you can do. You don't need to go crazy and like, uh, but there's, you know, there's tons of exercises you can use with bands, right? Where you're stepping, you put a band around your knees. Those are good too. I really like the balance oriented ones because you get both strength and uh, kind of the uh, nervous system, you know, working to help you balance. All right. So, so that's your homework. All right. Okay. So what I want to do now is give you a couple examples. I'm going to do a tiny bit of double pull instruction. Um, and then we will go uh, to some video examples of kind of, all right. So um, if you guys can hop up and um, I will say, uh, I really enjoy doing these presentations in person. Um, so then we can do this together. Uh, but unfortunately, um, that's not possible right now. <laughs> so we're gonna do the best we can. All right, so stand up, it's good to move. Hopefully I'm not boring you too much. Um, so here we go, we're gonna work on, um, so we're gonna do some, a little bit of double pulling and just to note, it doesn't matter if you're double pulling classic or skate. I mean, the differences are super minute and I will describe a little bit, okay? But um, so a couple of big things. First, we're gonna just start with some arm swing, okay? Boom. So this is pretty good arm swing up. I'm getting a range of motion here at when my hands are stopping, my elbows are close to 90, maybe a little bit. This is not a ski technique, okay? closer to 90, you're gonna see a opening here, maybe, you know, if I'm just swinging, it's close to 90 as well. Okay, this is not a good way to ski, okay? It's called dinosaur arms, don't do that. Okay, so you wanna be able to swing, open them up, okay? And it does depend, of course, like the faster you're going, let's say you're skiing on a downhill, double pulling on a gentle downhill and the conditions are fast, this is gonna be, you're gonna open up more. Or if you're double pulling up a, whatever, you're trying to double pull up a hill because you have no kick or you just decided you want to double pull, then you're going to be tighter. This is not going to open as much, but it still has to open. It's very important. Okay. So here we go. Let's do a couple arm swings. Swing, swing. All right. There we go. So let's see if you can see yourself. You can pin your own video right now. All right. Um, on your uh, on your thing if you want and you can see hey am i opening my angle here all right okay so that's arm swing range of motion next uh let's uh let posture right when you come up hopefully you're not like this right so i'm going to swing up chest up eyes up 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 all right there we go posture all right we're going to talk eyes hands and shoulders is the next one um so very common mistake mistake in double pulling is um just trying to ski with your arms and even if your arms are really strong it's a big mistake all right and most of us arms aren't that strong and they're definitely in it. so Anyway, don't do that. Um, you need to use your torso. You need to use your abs. You need to use your core. Everybody's heard that a million times. Okay, but if you ski like this, that's what's happening. And a lot of people do it. Okay, especially when they're starting, but even once they're fairly good. Okay, so there's no, what you need is displacement, vertical displacement of the shoulder. <laughs> All right, boom. <laughs> okay, that's easy. All right, and that's gonna come uh, and uh, maybe you've done this drill, lock and load. Basically, lock and load drill just means hands, eyes, shoulders. They're locked together. They start at the pull plant, boom. And about one third of your pulling stroke is going to be in lock and load, especially if you're going uphill at all. The speed is moderate to low, okay? Boom. Even at high speed, um, it should, you know, someone's V2 sprinting. This is no good. Even at very high speed, it's got to be crunch. A very quick 
drop in the shoulder. All right. And if you're going, yeah, so yeah, so practice that a couple times. So lock and load. So here we're going to back up and we're going to just do the drill. Okay, eyes, hands, shoulders, crunch, 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 crunch. Okay, and you wouldn't now normally ski like that, right? That's a drill. Uh, although I would challenge you um, next time you're on roller skis or you go and get on snow and you get to a big hill, it's a pretty steep one. Um, the only way you're going to double pull up a, a steep hill is basically doing lock and load. Okay. Uh, you can even come to a stop between each pulling stroke and you'll go up no problem. It's not that hard. Here, crunch, crunch. A lot of people, um, they're, they're like, uh, this is normal. It just happens. They will plant their poles and they'll start really low and they'll plant and they'll try to go like this. I'm going to double pull up the big hill, you know, as a strength thing or whatever. That is like a disaster. No, no, no. Okay, abs are totally used up, right? It's all bad. So you need to, you know, hands up, you need to be fairly upright and crunch, short crunch, it's done. Boom, you do not come down here. All right, boom, boom, all right. Um, there are some differences, classic and skate. Skate poles a little bit longer. And so you can be a little bit, slightly more upright and you probably won't come down as far. Classic pole, there is, you know, you're going to use a little more um, range of motion, maybe at the waist, but it's still in general, most of your power is coming in here. My torso is never horizontal, right? Never. It's not helpful. Okay. So, anyway, so we talked about posture, we talked about a lot of low, uh, lock and load. Um, uh, last thing we'll, um, oh, square power. Okay, square of power, it applies to classic and skate, but it's even more skate. You have four points, right? You need four points to make a square. One, two, three, four, all right? Shoulders, hands, here we go, square of power. I'm trying to illustrate it here if I look at you guys this way, all right? That's a square if you're looking from you know the top, top view, maybe we can show it. There we go, kind of four points. It's a, Maybe not a perfect square, but pretty close. This would be the rectangle of weakness. Don't go down that road, okay? It's basically never useful, okay? If you are double pulling on a really high speed situation, gentle downhill, your hands will come out further, but never like this, okay? Skating, because of the pull length, pretty much always in the square power, <laughs> okay? But uh, what it's getting at is, most people, especially in their early parts of learning technique, uh, or if they were used to skiing with very short poles back when, um, are used to this. Don't do that. It's not helpful. Boom. Okay. So there you go. Square of power. And there are little variations of where your hands should be based on the speed, based on the angle of climb. Uh, we don't need to fuss with that too much. Um, just try to like remember the okay so and then i'm going to break her break her down here double polling so um order of operations okay order of muscle recruitment how's that first thing that's recruited boom is you plant your poles and you got lock and load going so i'm you knowing you guys are all saying to yourselves yeah that's obvious it's the core it's the abs good nice job okay boom that's what happens. First thing, crunch, right? You're not seeing any changes of angle here or here. Those muscles are still working, but they're not going through the range of motion. So bang, first one. Okay, so that's core. Second, lats, right? Those are what close out your shoulder. And third, triceps, all right? Triceps only work. You don't even use them. They don't go through that range of motion very much um in skating right skating is a lot of pushes like this and only when you have really good technique or really good glide let me spend a little more time in here um the only reason i bring it up is for double pulling is i see a lot of people too where they'll plant they'll get their hands in the right position and then they'll go like this boom no okay that comes last crunch boom boom 
right? And most often it's just the first two, crunch and close down that, and then you're up again. Let's say V2, very common, right? Boom, 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 right? Because my tempo is high enough, I don't have time to push through. All right, so something again, if you got a mirror or you can see yourself on your own video, you know, kind of check that out. So that's the order of operations, right? Um, basically, I should never see my hands straight by my side. All right, when my hands are coming through, my elbows should be bent and not until they pass here are they gonna straighten, okay? Um, okay. Um, last thing on just the uh, learning double pull, um, and that is body position. So we will talk about all the techniques, and this is not just for double pull, it's for uh, kick double pull and V2 and V1 and everything. It's like, where's your weight? Where do you, where should you, what do you look like at pull plant? And that is, again, I'll break out some video here. I do promise I will in a second. Uh, so you don't have to keep looking at me in my, you know, bedroom is like, Hey, what does it look like at pole plant? What do I need to do? Here's a skate, you know, here's a, and so I'm just here, get yourself up, put your hands up. And if you are like right now, if I want to get into athletic position and I put my hands forward a little bit here, I'm going to, I'm, I'm basically falling forward. So if I'm in good athletic position, I put my hands here, I can still balance. My weight is on my toes. So why don't you guys do that right now? Just put your hands at your side, ankles bent, knees bent just a little bit. And you should feel a weight on the balls of your feet. Okay. And now I want you to slowly lift your hands up. And as you do so, you're going to fall. All right. And if you didn't fall, it's because you, had, you weren't, your weight weren't, was not on the balls of your feet. Okay. And that's basically skiing. All right. That's good skiing, I should say. And it doesn't need to be like super dramatic, right? Here, I'm, I'm like, good, I'm fine, I'm balanced. And I'm gonna like put your weight on the balls of your feet right now, and then slowly lift your hands up and feel your, your weight, feel you fall forward. Okay, so skiing. If you're in good athletic position, just a tiny bit of ankle bend, you know, for most, you don't need, like initially, you don't need a lot, just a little bit, all right? Never like this. Like when you're on skis, you never, ever, ever straighten your legs out. Do not lock them out. Okay, there you go. How's that? Uh, and then, you know, all you do is swing your hands. Boom, done. Perfect technique. All right, you're here. Ankles, swing, bang, pulls go in. And so I'm going to hold myself up here on my, you know, clothing drawer. Um, so I'm going up. I get a little bit. And maybe you can't really see my heels, but they're coming up a tiny bit, all right? But I'm, they're coming up by virtue of me falling forward. I am not doing a heel lift, okay? That's a waste of time, okay? You're only falling forward and your heels are coming up a tiny bit because I had good athletic position and I swung my hands. You know, even in like halfway decent arm swing, hands up to my eyes, boom, I'm in the right position. Okay, cool. So that's it. You're done. That's game. You're perfect. All right. I wish it was that easy. But in theory, that's what it looks like. Okay. Now let's do the same thing. I want you to I want you to uh um swing out onto one foot. Boom. Okay, so that's V2 alternate. Or V2, doesn't matter, right? I'm swinging up and my weight, as my hands, I put my foot down, as my hand comes forward, my weight moves onto the ball of my foot. And I have to like brace in order not to fall over. Right? Now, if I had my poles and I was moving down the ski track, I would just put them in the ground, load up the weight of my upper body, bang, off I go. All right, okay. It's 7.59. I'm going to show you a couple examples, all right, of uh, uh, some ski technique. Um, so hold on. I'm going to go get my iPad.
Okay, here we go. I did spend, um, you know, like 45 minutes today trying to figure out how to project my iPad, you know, wirelessly and it didn't go so well. So I'm going old school. All right, there you go. You guys see that all right? I think you can. All right, we're gonna give you. All right, so here we go. Here's, um, oh, this app, by the way, uh, everybody uh, who, uh, love skiing should just get the app it's like the swiss skiing app go to your it's it's maybe five bucks it's awesome it's got all the techniques broken down um you know you could go on youtube and see all this stuff but it's really nice to have on your phone or ipad so anyway here we go here's a guy doing the little legs only i'm just gonna play him briefly okay all right now Unfortunately, a lot of these guys, guys and women that are skiing on here are amazing skiers, Swiss national team people. Um, and you're going to see my, uh, you're not going to see my face here too much. Okay. But you can see his face anyway. Um, so they are wonderful examples, but most of us can't ski this way. And maybe if you're like, uh, you know, 18 year old, like high level college athlete, or often I've seen a lot of like 10 year olds that have such good ankle flexion. Nevertheless, we can see this kind of for, to just to illustrate some things, big ankle, uh, right? A lot of ankle bend. You can see the foot being placed down with ankle bend. And all right, oh, here we go. It's gonna go slow-mo, I think, for us. All right, the other part I want you to see here is the extension. So this is skating. That's pretty awesome. Okay, this guy's got some nice extension. All right, he's also doing what I call speed skater, and I'm going to continue to play this. Um, and I like to do a lot of training this way. Um, you see how his arms are moving? He's very uh, aggressive with his arms. This is a great shot right now. Okay. Boom. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oops. I guess I should have turned that off. I didn't think of that. All right. Okay. So this is awesome skiing right here. And now you get to see fantastic weight shift. Okay. That's good weight shift. And, you know, this is this guy's, you know, pro uh, World Cup skier. That's a perfect illustration. If you look at his belly button, as right over the ski. Okay. And, um, and he's using his arms to really create, uh, to help him emphasize the weight shift. The thing he's doing well is he's not twisting his shoulders. All right, so I'm gonna just, so anyway, this is just a, a wonderful example. Love this, here we go. Okay, a couple little things um, that he's doing right there. He said he brought his foot underneath him and this is a pretty advanced move right here, but you can see he's gonna put it down on the inside edge of the ski, all right? All right, right there, okay? And so it's gonna be just for a moment, a fraction of a second on the inside. There you go, inside edge, now it's flat. Now it's flat for a little bit. And then as his weight moves off, it's angled onto the inside. Most of us, you know, barely get onto a flat ski. And now he does the same thing on the other ski. It's edged a tiny bit on the outside. So that's a fairly advanced move. But so you understand what it means to ride a flat ski is it actually means at high speed and he's going pretty fast. They actually ride, uh, here we go, boom. All right, cool. So that's a um, little skating legs only. Uh, I'm gonna illustrate, here we go. Uh, here we go. All right. They call this two skating. We call it V2 alternate. Um, all right. So just a little bit. All right. Here we go. So, and same thing they're going to show him from the side. And you can see right now he's almost got a rectangle power of a uh, rectangle weakness going. Uh, this is Dario Colonia, so he can maybe afford that. Uh, he's reaching out. You see his elbow angles are pretty small, uh, or, or I should say very large, right? He's, he's extended his arms out. That's because he's going really fast. Um, 
All right, so big swing, really into that double pull position. All right, now it's gonna slow it down for us. It'll be like, boom. And you can see how he's going up. And this is just same as double pull. You can see he's got, look at that uh, um, really nice uh, posture, big shoulder angle. You know, his elbow angle is fairly open, but again, he's going fast, so we'll let him get away with it. You can see his lower leg, he's on his right leg, little bit of flexion right there, but not much, it's fairly straight, right? And now he's going to crunch, right? He got that little bit of, um, what do you call it? Lock and load. Now he's moving into the lats. And then the last bit, you can see his hands come through. Boom, and it, even triceps. And so this is, yeah. He's really good. Now we're going to see from the front and you're going to be able to see a little bit of uh, oh yeah, this is awesome. Kind of a scary looking suit, but kind of cool. All right. Some of the things that uh, Dario, uh, Dario, excuse me, um, does so well is um, skating. He keeps his torso facing forward. There's no twisting of the torso, right? Um, and uh, what I'm gonna say, uh, and he's very balanced. So this is up on the pulling side leg. And this is where, again, all those exercises I talked about, it takes uh, a lot to be able to ride a ski like that. And he's not stopping. It's, that's like balance for like a fraction of a second. Boom. So it's swing, pull. There we go. And this is how I often will scream at skiers when they're skiing, swing. That's the arm pulls and then pull is when the pole hits and his weight shift moves across. And I wanna just illustrate weight shift now. Boom, okay, so you can see, look at his belly button. It's directly over his, uh, that'd be his right ski, okay? And, and his, now as he's gonna plant his poles and then drive. So the pole plant, and the leg push and the weight shift are all gonna happen. And he moves very quickly off that ski. There we go, push across and then he finishes. And the weight shift isn't quite as good on the non-pulling side. You can see where his belly button is, but that's normal. Most people get really good weight shift on that side and not, there we go. Anyway, you get the point. Okay, so that's V2 alternate showing some really good weight shift. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna show you one more. Um, and I really like this gear. Uh, she's not famous like Dario Colonia, but she has awesome technique. Um, okay, this is maybe something all of us can relate to a little bit. And this is herringbone skate, also called coach's skate, also called wimp skate. I don't think it's Wimsky. I use it all the time. Uh, but anyway, here. Uh, so here she goes, up, up, up. Now, normally you'd use it on a lot steeper hill than this. Um, but for filming purposes, I'm sure they didn't have another good hill to use. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to project it here. Uh, either way, she does it really well. Why I want to show you is that the upper body positions, again, it doesn't matter. Uh, at pole plant, there you go. There's pole plant. I'm gonna take the pole, the next one. Oops, I missed it. Anyway, my point was that you're gonna see really good, um, oops. Uh, you're gonna see, There we go. If you watch the torso and lower leg and lots of ankle flexion, this is one you're going up a steep hill, Berkey style. Yeah, this is, and now you can see the weight shift at low speed is much smaller. On a steep hill, you're going to have very little weight shift. You can see her hands, even though she's not double pulling, you can see still square power that coming right in front of her joints. And this is really important. Yeah, she's awesome. And so I, I love teaching herringbone skate because nobody thinks like there's any technique involved. You just watch this and then you know how to do it. 
See their hands right in front of her shoulder joint. And then pretty much going straight back. We're not going off to the side. That's good skiing. All right. And the last part is you can see the leg extension. Here, watch your leg ex extend each time, right? We talked about push theory, ankle, knee, and you're not gonna see as much toe drive anytime you're on a steep hill that you're not gonna see the final push on the toe. All right, cool. So that was some good stuff. Let's take a look at a, I'll, I'll just pull up a couple examples of uh, classic skiing, all right? Um, all right. Um, All right, here we go, classic diagonal stride. I'm gonna start with uh, um, some double pull. I actually am not crazy about his double pull here, but I'll show it anyway. All right, here we go, we're gonna take a second. I know he's Dario, so how could I say that? But often the very strongest skiers, um, you know, do some weird things because they can get away with it. Um, anyway, but here we go. There's a good pole plant. You can see the poles are quite vertical. So this is a fraction of a second before the poles go in the ground, right? All right, pretty good, pretty good position right there. Um, you got, you see a lot of shoulder angle. You can see a little bit of ankle flexion, right? Look at his torso, really nice posture, very straight back. And you can look at his eyes. Like at that perpendicular to his spine. Like that's all good stuff right there. Okay. Now, if he was going uphill, you would see a little more elbow bend and you would see those pole tips a lot closer, closer to his toes. As, as you can see, it's completely flat. Okay. So that's kind of the, all right, I'm going to walk it forward a little bit. All right. Oops. Boom. Boom. All right. Boom. Okay. One. All right. Pulls in, crunch, and you're gonna see this is all just crunch. Crunch, crunch, right? This, this is uh, lock and load, lock and load. And now shoulder, right joint is, so the lats are engaged, right? And now, yeah, boom. And now he's up, he's coming up a little bit. Okay, so. That's kind of flat double pull, boom. And he's definitely getting his heels up a little bit. And we'll, we'll slow it down here for a second. Boom, all right. Up, oh, nice posture, he does that really well. You can see his torso, I mean, it never comes, you know, to horizontal. It's definitely a little above that, which is great. Um, okay. Uh, I know a lot of athletes and that are on the World Cup, and you'll see um, they don't even come uh, as low as he did. Um, and why that is, is because he didn't actually, they will have a little more flexion in their ankles. And this is an important, uh, I'll just give you guys, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up here in a second. Um, I'm just going to give you uh, one little thing to take home with you uh, on double polling is, uh, and, and this goes across all the techniques, but it's pretty obvious. It's nice to learn when you double pull. When the poles go in the ground, a fair amount of ankle, like as you go up, as, I, as I'm approaching double pull, my legs look fairly straight. And right as they, as they, my poles come down, I need to flex, I need to give a little bit, all right? So two reasons, one, I'm giving because I'm dropping my weight on my poles. I'm not trying to, just do this, okay? I'm actually dropping my weight. And so the poles go in, my ankles flex. The more I flex, and you'll see a lot of guys, a lot of guys and a lot of women skiers, um, they're very good at like, boom. So there's that little crunch, boom. Especially if you're doing like a sprint double pull, bang, bang, 
bang, a lot of ankle motion here. And it's the same thing. And the nice thing is if you get good at that, it's really easy to switch it to all your skate techniques. Oh, right? There's a quick drop, quick drop, quick drop. This is super important for adults. Very often, if you learned to how to ski when you were, I don't know, in your 40s or 50s, that flexion doesn't happen. A lot of people are very stiff legged and then they just bend at the waist. So you gotta get in front of the mirror. Boom. Hands come down and you just do this right here. Boom. Boom. Right after you practice your, uh, you know, balance, your little balance drills. Okay. Sorry. That was a little, little. All right. Kick double pull. This is my favorite skier again. Oh, no, not Dario. I'm getting, I'm getting sick of you. There we go. All right, I like it. There we go. All right, so kick double pull. Um, one of my very favorite techniques. It's super easy to learn how to do well if you focus on it a little bit. Oops, here we go. And, um, and, both adults and high school skiers don't use it nearly enough. And some people say, well, it's a dead technique. Uh, no, it's not. And I, I just saw, I was watching some old sprints, old, like last year. And um, yeah, so I saw Claybo kick double pulling in a sprint race. So it just tells you it's definitely, it's not dead. All right. And it's really good to help master a good ski technique and i'm just going to walk here i'm going to let her play and they'll slow her down in a second there we go boom okay so key things on the kick double pull is at the end of double pulling uh so it, you need to stand up all right boom you see that there we go that's kind of standing up you can see her legs are still a tiny bit bent her torso is fairly vertical super important all right, to stand up and then everything drops down and ankles bend. Not a ton, but that's, you know, you, so you need to like go through a range of motion where they're straight and then they drop and then you kick, boom. And you can see, and she has a nice kind of soft ankle, the forward ankle also bent, right? Boom. And and you can see how nicely she stands up. This is really kind of cool up. There you go. So that is, uh, I'm just gonna illustrate last thing in different kinds of double pulling. That's kind of what I'd call a double pull, a distance double pull where you come up and your body comes up. There we go from the front, not quite as exciting, but you can see the hand positions, right? Right in front of his shoulders. I spent a lot of time asking athletes to put their hands in front of their shoulder joints. And they're like, I am. And I'm like, you have, your shoulders are, you know, two feet wide. I don't think so. Um, they're about maybe 14 inches wide at the most. So anyway, there we go. I'll kick double pull. Um, okay, let's do a little diagonal stride. Mostly why I like to go through all the different techniques is so you can see the similarities, um, not the differences. Okay, so again, the big one is seeing body position, you know, at pole plant, doesn't matter what technique. Okay, and I really seriously recommend, if you like this kind of thing, talking about technique, get the app, it's great. Um, I don't get a percentage. All right, I'm gonna play him here. All right, one thing uh, about classic skiing, one of the things I love watching him, he is one of the best classic skiers in the world. Uh, that is definitely his strength. It's called daylight. Talk about range of motion. Look at the, the, the daylight between, right, right here between the legs, okay? That would be lots of daylight. And the biggest thing when I, you know, when people are first starting to classic ski, they take a little stride, their legs are basically together and they're shuffling along. And this is, that doesn't mean you're gonna do this right away, but this is where you wanna go, okay? That's a big stride. There's no question this guy is. And here she is, I don't know her name, but 
like to watch her ski. She's awesome. It's a huge stride. Okay. So that's, uh, there's one thing. All right, now let's talk up, oh, but we caught her right at the beginning at pole plant. So that's good. Um, if you can look at her torso and her lower leg, hopefully you can see those are pretty much parallel. Very nice position, elbow close to 90 degrees, shoulders right about 90. All right. This used to look a little different because pole, people have a different, a little longer poles now. Um, but this is pretty awesome skiing right here. All right. And so now I, I just, um, I'm going to break this into a couple phases. First thing is the polling phase. She is just balancing on that right leg. So some people are like, well, it's not, you know, balance isn't that important in classic skiing. It is. Your foot is in a track, but if you're not balanced, you can't have a stride this long. Also, if you're not balanced, you're riding the edges and your ski isn't gliding well and you're scraping all the wax off your ski. All right, all the kick wax off. So you wanna keep a nice flat ski. It's not that easy. Roller skiing does help you. Okay, so this first part I'm clicking through, it's just the arm. So those of you that do a lot of single polling, I like to torture people with that. That's why it's important. That's all, it's still single, it's still polling, polling all on one arm. Now the kick is happening right now and it's really short. There's a kick. It's pretty much done. And now you can see the back pole is still in the ground. So now that pole is still helping forward progress. So we went from pulling only phase to kick the kick phase. And now we're in the last bit of uh, pulling. And as soon as that pole gets out of the ground, boom, right now, okay. Now there's a momentary bit of free glide, but it's pretty short because the other pole is boom, now in the ground. So now we started the next stride. Couple key things. Um, you know, we talked about the, the start position. There we go, that's a start position. And again, look at the elbow, it is bent, right? The pole. That's really, really good. And you see her back arm, this arm, right? You can see this arm right here. It's a perfectly straight line from her shoulder to the pole basket. And for those juniors that train with me, boy, that is, that is the deal right there. That's perfect, like relaxed arm swing. And that's what I insist on, all right? That's like, yeah. And very few people ski like that. I'm gonna show you an example. That's why we spend a fair amount of time often in the parking lot or at the beginning of a ski because most people they'll do this. And it's like, yeah, that's good running technique. That's not a good ski. Classic skiing, boom, 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 boom. You can do it in the mirror. Like, can I swing my hands and I let my pole go and you should be able to see my knuckles. A lot of people, it's how your straps are adjusted and so on. When you use classic ski, you gotta let go. It doesn't look like this with the fist and like that. And the pole just goes straight back. And then you swing your hand up and you grab the pole right here somewhere. Back, put it in the ground. Okay. Oh, that looks, that's awesome. That's fantastic. So if you're learning how to classic ski or you've been classic skiing for a year or two and you're like, yeah, that put that image in your mind. That's what you want to ski like. Uh, interesting here. I just want to, this is a very advanced concept, but I'm just going to throw it out there. You start here. This is a classic kick right now. You go from here. And this is called the hitch. You're gonna see her left leg or kicking leg. It's actually gonna straighten momentarily. Look at that, it is totally straight. Sometimes it'll look like it's hyperextended and then it's gonna bend super fast and I will play it in full motion and you won't even see that happen. It goes from ankle bent to, to ankle and knee bent to no bend whatsoever. And then into a very quick kick, watch this, bang. And now this is slow-mo, uh, but it happens super fast. And that really quick kick 
is uh, what makes classic skiing quite efficient. There you can see it. You can see it here, actually. You can see the bend and then watch here and then drop, boom. That's the kick when it drops this right there. So it's called the hitch. This is kind of cool watching the front because you can see his hips move a little bit. There's a little bit of hip rotation. She does it really well too. All right. Anyway, you can also see the hand placement, which is awesome right in front of the joint. Okay. All right. I think that's my signal. <laughs> I have tortured you long enough. Um, so that's all I got. Um, I do have uh, some some of these presentations. Well, I'll post this one. Um, I guess I would say if you want me to email you uh, a link to it, um, then please email me. I, I, I don't have another good way of doing this, I guess. Um, for those of you that are in current LNR programs, I will um, send out a link. But if you're not, um, I'm happy to send it, but you need to email me. Uh, so uh, bednarski at lapa.org. Cool. Um, Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm happy to hang out for a few minutes and answer any questions. So bye-bye. Thanks. Oh, the exact app name. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, if you go to the app store and look under Swiss cross-country skiing or something like that, um, I have it right here. Let me see if it has an exact name. I'm gonna look right now. But yeah, if anybody has a question, I, I can look in the uh, the chat there if you have a question. But if you wanna, uh, let's see. It uh, it just says Swiss cross country skiing. Let me see. Cross country skiing, Swiss ski. That's. That's all I got. Hmm. Oh, anyway. So yeah, anybody got any questions? I could turn the recording off. Would that make you less bashful? <laughs>